boy isn't it cold today happy valentine's day everybody how about you warm up your v-day by listening to this week's episode of vyv where today we talked about who's the biggest trash panda and eats the most out of the garbage also disclaimer about towards the last third of the episode we get into some religion talk that you may or may not want to tune in and out of we also talk about a gin that was made in a micro distillery here out of madison some people would say is average size but who is that to say so thank you for watching make sure you like share and subscribe and thank you for listening welcome to bro taste this nothing of value I'm Maybe sorry, that's what we should saying. rename this to. All right. <laughs> Dude, don't break the fourth wall. That's meta. I'm so, I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. I'm just you know we like to have fun here. We're just joshing here, folks. We're I just listened to the dudes. episode between you, Caesar, and uh, Emily, and the whole time you're like, I mean, you did a little bit in the taco video of the footage I saw mm-hmm. of like full 100 percent personality fill. But then in the podcast, dude, it was so like, it was so forced. Wait, you you, you listened to the forty minute podcast? Yeah, dude, because I'm like, is this is there anything from here that I can take? And it was like, oh, uh, substance, just a lot of this, a lot of looking at the camera, <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. y'all like finger guns. Where are you guys? I was like, pew, bro, pew. Just, when you interview someone, just like. The important thing is to act like there's not a camera there. Like there's a window oh, yeah. into a conversation. Yeah, it was tough. Some of it was uh Are you talking about the band video? The, n- no, I don't know. Wait, no, no, no. N- not not my smoothest transitions. You, you caught that. <laughs> but that's gonna be edited perfectly, so none none of you all would know that. I listen to uh everything. As I keep I watch I watch everything we do, I listen to everything we do. As I keep all the finger guns in. Criticize the fuck out of everything. But I I'm surprised oh speaking of the videos, I'm surprised the uh uh the taco video went over pretty well, which uh, if you're all listening to right now, uh definitely check that out on our YouTube page where I went around with uh as forementioned uh friend of the KS Emily to different taco trucks in the Milwaukee area, try them out and um See which one was uh, pretty good, and uh, yeah, no, the first taco truck, they did me pretty dirty. I said con todo, and yeah, they, they did. They, they did me. They they put lettuce, tomatoes, I mean, sour yeah, cream. Fact, yeah, let's actually start the podcast now. Yeah, that that taco video was actually really funny. It mm-hmm. was um, they it, really did you dirty on that first one. The first three seconds, it was the uh, the dude. He was the last taco truck we were at, La Guenaguenza. I'm saying that completely wrong. Which, Dude, I couldn't even understand what he said. And I boosted the audio and everything. I didn't fucking understand. He's like, he's like, bro, prueba esto. Si. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then yeah, I couldn't understand anything. He's like, tacos de la guana la guan. So I'm like, what? My, my, Los mejor tacos, güey. And then I turn my face around. I'm like, what? That's my genuine <laughs> reaction. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Did you catch it? It, it? it was funny, though, seeing everybody open up their first pack of tacos. And yours are, like, covered in fucking um, repollo. Which is cabbage, cabbage, and mm-hmm. tomatoes, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then everybody else just says regular tacos, and I'm like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah, he did me dirty. And yeah, they just like fully. And then the second one had a fucking baked potato. The what second and about? the third one. The third one had a baked potato too. Yeah, and so I've later figured out that those two taco trucks were once like a partnership. But they got divorced, so like mm. now they respectfully each own a different taco truck. <laughs> I and wonder what the the conflict there was. Probably the baked potato. One of them wanted to add butter, the other did not. You know what? I, I yeah. think I, I think the baked potato situation is kind of like a like the wife is like, oh, like I don't want to get rid of it because people come here for the baked potato. <laughs> and I think the I husband, it was so weird. the husband probably like makes a baked potato and like remembrance for the wife, like. We used to do this together and like praise for one day that she comes back. So Bro, but a big potato. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. The big potato is so like you're never eating a taco and you're like, you know what sounds really good? A fucking bland potato. Yeah. You know what this taco needs? Some sour cream, baked potato bits. <laughs> like when you eat a taco, you're like, oh, man, I, like, I want to I want to bite into something spicy or have mm-hmm. like, you know, something to uh, go with it. But. Yeah, I thought that was really strange. 
But yeah. guys, you know, Juan, I haven't seen you in a while. How you been? How you been, partner? Oh yeah, what have you been up to? I've been really good, bud. I've been really good. Um, lately, last week, uh, I worked uh, Winterfest in Lake Geneva, which, uh, like, if you're not familiar, Winterfest is one of Lake Geneva's like busiest times of the year. I don't know how many thousands of people they get that weekend. Over a hundred thousand or some shit. I had no mm-hmm. idea. Um, yeah, Lake Geneva, oh, yeah. like it's always a seasonal thing happening. They got Venetian Fest, they got the Winter yeah, Fest. Yeah, so that that was this. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys remember a few years ago when uh, the lakes fell through or the truck fell through the lake. Yeah, uh, there was the same event, but you know, many years uh, forward. Oh, um, at, at the Conca- Caucasian Fest. That that's years? right, at the Cauc- the Caucasian Fest, mm-hmm. as you said. Yeah. Lake Geneva's famous for that one. Yeah, they all get together and they're like, they're taking our jobs. <laughs> But yeah, I I um I had to write the tiki menu for that. I feel like I, I um maybe now or later um I could like uh, reiterate what a few of those were, and you guys could tell me which one of those sounds good or not. Okay. Um, but yeah, there was like like a few really cool ingredients. Like we had a. Uh, did you use any of the tiki suggestions we came up with? I did not. You so didn't use the hibiscus did uh, I did not. Malibu tiki. Hibis- wasted our fucking time. Hibiscus Malibu one. Yeah. No, I did not. You, you didn't blend four fucking fruit together. <laughs> no, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't give us that. Well, I. What was your bullshit re- uh, suggestion, Phil? Dude, I love what Leo says. Like, like, oh, your your suggestion was to go around pick flowers and put Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what Phil's was, but it was like, yeah, blend a dragon fruit, blend fucking whiskey in there, add a hibiscus. Like, how is that any gonna, any <laughs> of that? How is that gonna taste good? How is that tiki? But yeah. Wait, you don't want to tell us to drink now? What? What'd you say? You don't want to. You don't want to yeah, tell well, us to drink now? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. I can absolutely tell you guys. Don't be uh, teased. One of the one of the cool ones um, that wasn't like the least related to tiki, but I thought was still really cool um, mm-hmm. was a mezcal hot chocolate drink. Uh, we we made a hot chocolate that was like spiced with uh, cinnamon, anise, a little bit of red chili pepper, um, and served that with mezcal. And Nixta, this motherfucker right here, which is a Mexican sweet corn liqueur that kind of introduces like a sweet masa flavor. So it kind of almost drank like an atole as well. You know, like even wow. though it didn't have like corn in there, you mm-hmm. introduce a little bit of that corn flavor and it, it has those like atole flavors to it. Sounds very sweet. I like that one. Um, yeah, that was one. Like we needed to have like a dressed up hot chocolate so that's what we came up with um another one which i think you guys would kind of appreciate uh i had to make something that was crowd friendly so i came up with like an adult version of a lemon drop i did two ounces of lychee infused gin to give it a tiki element i did a quarter ounce of yellow chartreuse 0.75 of lemon juice and uh, 0.5 ounce of uh, ginger simple syrup with a, few, a bunch of dashes of ginger tincture as well to really like spice up uh, the cocktail to work with the ginger, ginger and lemon light. is like a classic combination, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what what I was going for the the lychee and the floral notes of the gin, uh, working with the yellow chartreuse with the ginger and the lemon, all kind of go ginger together. Ginger what you said? Tincture. Ginger. What the fuck is that? You can make your own like uh, like like bitters basically. Um, yeah. that are at like 60 to 70 percent alcohol and then you use like a few drops of them and they're they bring a lot of flavor versus like having to use a bunch of of uh, like a quarter ounce or half an ounce you just have to use like six strong dashes almost like bitters mm-hmm. but like much more like one noted because bitters are usually like a blend of ingredients while tinctures are like one or two ingredients it's m- more concentrated of yeah that flavor yeah and it's it's also higher proof um, but yeah, I, I made the tincture. I made the syrup. Like that one was a, like a true original. Um, that one was really good. It was probably one of the best sellers. Um, so for for winter vis, prep time wise, how long did it take you out of your like convenience? You, you mean it, did it require a lot of prep for? Yeah, all this it required stuff? a lot of prep. And like mm-hmm. I thought I over prepped the first day, but um, even then uh, we ran out by like midday Saturday. So we, we we were even though I prepped a lot for Fuck, yeah we we prepped a lot um, Thursday night uh, Friday night and uh that saturday day all like depleted those batches so we had to start over would your company allow you personally to hire your own stodges like uh, separate from your establishment like yeah. a juan you know legends uh school of bartending 
and like you tell you tell them that you're gonna learn to be like me one day, but you're gonna learn how I learn. So make them do the bareback work and all that stuff, the prep work, the cutting, and you know. Yeah. So you're saying like those um, really high end restaurants have interns that like. Yes. Kind of kiss the head chef's ass. Would I want to set up something like that for myself? But per- personally, it's just for you. I, no. No. That's like yeah, the personal psychopathic that just, type shit. Like, yeah, why would narcissism. I? Why would I want that? Like, Are you saying Mr. Miyagi was a psychopath? A I, narcissist? I don't, I, I'm not going to. Don't you want to help? That's a you. If you want to make that accusation, that can be you. Don't you want to give back to the community? Beyond that, Luis, what did you think about a few of those drinks? Dude, the second one sounded really interesting. I fuck with lemon drop just because it's a fun, you know, citrusy drink. And so the fact that you had lychee gin and then the the added ginger element sounds really fun. Dude, I'm um, telling you that lychee and gin, dude, because lychee is like almost like a super floral, like juicy peach type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just works so well with gin. It sounds really, really good. I think uh, a lot of those um, elements that pop through in gin already like the citrus the um for lack of a better term the pine cone element the juniper like the, yeah so those all really like make me feel really good and want to like fight somebody so i think <laughs> just adding more to that and making it even better tasting cocktail uh i would love to stop by and have something along those lines to bet mm-hmm. that'd be great and i you know I, i'm glad you were truthful about like the amount of prep time that like that was required, for, you know, to put into this, yeah, for, to make the uh, the Winterfest memorable, yeah, because this kind of leads into what the IRS is trying to take away from service workers, which is like they're tipping, right? They're, they want, yeah, them to the, the IRS want to um, crack down on servers, bartenders, and uh, tipping positions in the gambling industry and gaming industry. So mm-hmm. I assume like casinos and whatnot, um, and mm-hmm. they want to like start introducing. I believe all sorts of virtual programs for employers to participate, and they're also like creating incentives for those employers to sign up. So, huh. yeah, um, okay. just uh, s- build up that piggy bank it. while you can, boys. Yeah. This is that that warning, you know. This is that uh, signal flare. You know. yeah. it, it starts. Call off, up your financial advisor. It starts off with gambling, and then it's gonna lead into recreational, you know, and then it's yeah. gonna lead to like. Did you get 60 bucks from your grandma? Well, we get 20% of that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So here I have it up on uh, the, f- the the TV, folks. Uh, so this was released two days ago. The Treasury Department. This is notice 2023-13, a proposed revenue procedure that would establish service industry tip compliance program, voluntary tip reporting program, voluntarily. Um, but they are cracking down on it. Uh, this is on the IRS website. And the intent of it is for tip rate determination agreement, tip reporting alternative commitment. So pretty much just don't lie about your tips, especially I'm guessing the big thing is like cash tips. I know that was always harped on when I was uh, still uh, slinging drinks and entrees over there. But dude, fuck them. Fuck that. You're getting paid in this country. (laughs) Even in un country. In this fucking estate, in this national like agreement that we live in we are paid dicks and dollars to serve drinks and take care of people like usually less than five dollars as a server and then usually around seven to ten dollars as a bartender and now you want me to claim the one bit of fucking gratitude i receive Mm -hmm. fuck that shit fuck that shit i say we stick to our guns amen i used to voluntarily steal cash from my establishments (laughs) every single one that i worked with i'm not a Free to say that. <laughs> and you know what, bro? Yep. What was I supposed to do? I had to pay for fucking school. I had car payments. Yep. Like, fuck. And that that's fuck what him. makes you such a valuable worker because you were willing to steal from your company. Make them yeah. better. Yeah. Dude, I just wanted to provide the best service I could. And unless I was getting that dough. Yep. Bro, you ain't going to catch me at 6 a.m. You're like one of those Fortune 5 CEO hundreds or whatever they're called. The Fortune yeah. 500 uh, CEOs. Yeah. They like hire yeah. like hackers to like... Is our spy on their own employees? And yeah. Shit. yeah. Is, is our firmware up to date? So yeah. they hire like a hacker to like, get into their. That shit? is basically what Luis is. Yes. Yeah. Luis yeah. was like the security guy, like for the bars. Any, yeah, yeah. He, you were testing their security, yeah. and if it wasn't good enough, you were taking advantage of that. You're a modern mm-hmm. day Joey Diaz, bro. Oh, yeah. That was that was yeah, that was beautiful. 
yeah, there's, there's one moment that comes to mind really uh, clearly. Mm-hmm. It was like really, really early in the morning. I think it was like maybe eight, eight or nine a.m. And uh, we hadn't really opened our full bar yet. I think the bartender didn't get there until like eleven or ten. Yeah, baby, and somebody yeah. walks in. They're like, "Oh, can I get a Bloody Mary?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And they're like, "You know what? Make it two. I'm like, "That you know, we're <laughs> not going to be open for another hour or two. I just quickly make them two Bloody Marys, and I'm like, I, I put it on the c- computer screen, and it was like fourteen bucks or something like that. And she hands me. 20 and then left and i was like cancel transaction <laughs> there we go and i was like this bitch is going in the back pocket i'm a bad like, boy yeah i was like i'm not when the bartender gets here he ain't got it now yeah everybody <laughs> shut the fuck up you didn't see anything <laughs> see I'm, I'm glad we're being honest about our, our, our trails and trifles of uh our bats establishments and whatnot back when you know where we used to work at the gi days I uh I was a you know a bus boy and whatnot so I take the very brave of you to there. say the name of the place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> back at the specific restaurant on 300 South Water Street. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean this is uh this is kind of a felony now, but uh I would take the plates <laughs> back and I would eat the French toast off if they, you know if there were some French toast. Bro, I don't think that's a felony. I think that's just gross. Bro, bro, <laughs> I think some, that's just frowned that upon. Disgusting. Some of yeah. these people wouldn't even touch it. You know, you, you remember the plates. You remember how greedy paid. you guys were, and you know that motherfucker was like, "Hey, bro, taste this." Hey, bro, <laughs> <laughs> just eating directly off the plate. I was like, <laughs> "Dude, hey, uh, Phil would s- sell people on dishes he wanted to try later, <laughs> hey, <laughs> just man, in hopes man. that they would leave some leftovers." <laughs> it's like you know, it tastes really good French toast, but you had bacon on top, and they're like, "Oh." Sure. Like, this is fucking disgusting. Take this away. And then he's like taking it to the bag and he's like, nom, nom. did they like that? Inter- they- intercepts <laughs> it from other bus boys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Martin, bro. Let me, let me see that. Let me see that. Hey, this table asked for me specifically, so I got it for you. Yeah, you take care of table three. I'm going to go. You you worry about the water. I worry about the plates. So fucking, we'll tag team this shit. <laughs> Sneak away to the private rooms to eat their French shows. The French shows was baller, though. Dude, it was. It was so fucking good. So spongy. Yeah. And- Beautiful, like angel cake. And I'm, I'm being honest here. The adrenaline that I felt from like, oh my god, just eating like stolen French toast. I was like the book thief, just like you yeah. know, this is so bad. Dude, to relate to that, this I, is so bad. I, I got another disgusting ass story like that when I used to. What's up? Be a dishwasher at a fish fry place. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like 15, and they, I was like too fucking dumb or shy to ask for food, like I rightfully should have. And they were nice enough. They would have done it. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> I just, instead, here I am, like, taking out, like, I didn't do it off the dishes, which is, like, not that bad, considering what I'm going to say now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which is, which I, is way worse. Which is I, way worse, bro. I got to feel like I know where this yeah, is going. I, yeah, you do, <laughs> bro. I, I got tasked <laughs> with, like, taking out the trash, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I popped that motherfucker open, bro. And I was like, oh, Hush Puppies, what's up, dude? <laughs> Bro, you were cooled out, man. Dude, I was like a pet, like a trash panda. <laughs> yeah, bro. Dude, that, those hush puppies stood no chance. God, damn, dude, early days being in the kitchen and just seeing all that food and being like, "Fuck, fuck. this is gonna go to waste. No one's gonna touch this. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, like fuck it." That's when you, the amount of self respect and the amount that you're like, <laughs> of all the things that can kill me, it's not gonna be this. <laughs> and if man, this I, does kill me, I deserved it. Right. We'll have to get him on the podcast someday. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, John, uh, mm-hmm. he, so he, he's been a waiter for, you know, many years. And one day he brings out scallops to the table and I'm going to butcher this story, but he brings out scallops to the table. It's this older lady. She's eating by herself, you know, and comes back in like 10, 15 minutes. And he's like, Oh, how's everything going? Scallops are like pretty much on toast. She ate some of her veggies and she's like it's good it's good i think i'm done and he's like untouched scallops i think one was eaten untouched scallops he takes them back puts them in a box and he's like "Ooh, you know i feel something wrong let me double check so he goes back in like a minute or two and he goes hey you know the chef saw me take them back he just wanted to confirm that you enjoyed them that they were good she's like oh no they were they were quite fine i just i'm not too big you know and he's like, all right, yeah, no worries, no worries. And then he's like fucking chowing them down in the back when no one can see him. And uh, he comes back and he's like, I'm guessing you didn't leave room for dessert because you didn't eat the scallops. She goes, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm full. You know, what I like to do with the scallops is I like to suck on the juices and then just leave them back. And then he's like, you like to do what now? <laughs> you like to <laughs> stick them in your mouth and suck on them like a hockey puck <laughs> and then just spit them back. God he just damn. went to the back kitchen. He's like, he's just chugging ginger ale and fucking clothes soda. Bro, this lady you was- should have gone to the bathroom and made himself puke. Oh, dude, I'm I surprised you, you didn't. Dude, this lady was treating yeah. the scallops like idiomi. He's just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like <laughs> sucking dude. out the, the part she wants. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, scallops are flavorful, but to suck on the juices and then put them back, I, that's. Mm. And, and also, you would think that, like, the sucking motion would kind of, like, make them fall apart a little bit, you know, like, alter what know. they look like. Uh, for sure, yeah. alter what they look like. But, you would think, but yeah, if you scallops are pretty like I don't know, they're like gelatinous, kind of like they're just very like webby, and so if you just take a bite out of them, like it might fall apart, but depends on how well both sides are seared, and so he must have just been like fuck it. And your server, you're just in a hurry. You're going from fucking table to table, yeah. and uh, yeah, man, it's. It's one of his great stories. That, Shout out John. <laughs> it sounds Shout like out a, John, bro. It sounds Good like a win-win. He got free food and a, and a makeout, essentially. <laughs> it's just like a win-win. Yeah, I don't know what this dude's complaining about. That's the yeah. point. Shit. Great point. Great point. Man, dude, I don't, I don't know if I've ever, I've definitely eaten things on people's plates. Always appetizers too, like because it's like finger food, like bruschetta. It'd be oh, like two gone, one untouched. I'd be like. And bruschetta is classy. That's classy Dude, shit. pizza, you're just like, fuck it. Like, you just cut off where they ate it, and you're like, boom, I got a fucking half a pizza. And then, yeah, man, before COVID, like, if someone ate a half a steak and then just left the other half, I would just cut the fucking sliver <laughs> that was <laughs> that they had bitten into, and I'd be like, well, do you know? Wait, so Bro, like, hopefully they never did the, the oyster treatment to this. Yeah, the hopefully steaks. they did not. <laughs> <laughs> I know we t- we tend to do questions at the end of the, of the show, but like, I, I, let me let me intercept this one with us. Have you guys ever eaten food you ever found in the public, like outside of a restaurant? You just found mm. food and you've eaten it. I have not, brother. Wait, lay wait, it down, wait. lay it down. What are what are the? I can say no pretty confidently. Mm-hmm. Like if I no, yeah, definitely not. No, damn it. I will say the only time that it's gotten close is. Uh, Cause I, I I have a yes story. Tell us. I I've eaten yeah. I've eaten pizza, but uh, I, I want to hear your story. See how close it is. I have I don't have a story. I, mine it. was like you know food gets a little dicey and you're like it's been in the fridge for like a week. You know? But like that's your own cooking and shit. But you actually ate something off the public street. Oh like no! A, Tell like the a people. trash panda. So like it was my uh, second music festival ever. I went to the forest. Woo! Right. And uh, the forest is like 15, 20,000 people, right? Dude, I feel like people that go to music festivals are really the yeah. lowest of the low. Oh, yeah. And this is like 2015. Calm down, Mr. Lychee Jin. 2014. Okay. <laughs> well, it's our be- one chance to escape. It's our fucking a kindergarten teacher party next to an accountant, okay? And we get three days of freedom. <laughs> For real, though, though you, I, you, you would talk to some of these people like, I'm, I'm from New York. I'm like the little teenage, you know? I, I know like the little rug rat gang of teenagers. Like, yeah, bro. They usually would go with. I'm talking about those teenagers. Like, oh, bro, some of them like 30 year olds. Like, yeah, dude, I'm yeah. like 28. And I'm like, ah, da, da, da. yeah, that's that's like us if we were to decide yeah. to go. Yeah. You know, I was like 18 at the time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you I don't know, know kind of these fucking rats and pieces of shit are going to these concerts. <laughs> I'm just saying it's usually the smelly people. Yes. Well, you just tend to smell. Well, You're I mean, around fucking people all day. You have some validity to that statement, but like not an electric forest is like the one of the Yeah, the that's big, one of the big, big ones. ones. It takes a lot of coin. Oh yeah. yeah. It's You're not gonna find self, any it's self selecting. Yeah. You need to be. You need to have a little coin to. Dude, rich people there. purposely smell that bad at that point. If you're at the forest <laughs> and you smell that way, you're going out of your way to like be dirty and a wookie. All right. So, yeah. what'd you eat at Electric Forest? Uh, so at the forest, they have different like you know uh, art art zones and all this shit, right? And they have this cool like hay zone called like the the nest. It's like a bird's nest. Like everyone's just you know lays around. And I was in there. I snuck in my uh, my uh, dabs, right? Mm-hmm. And I snuck in a blowtorch, you know. How did you sneak those things in? Through my thighs. You had a blowtorch on your thigh? Yeah, bro. 
How, did it, how big it was, was really, it? Though. Was it like this big? Or hey, was bro, it like... nah, 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 nah. You know where that thing was pointed, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if this goes bro. off, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> if they search me, I'm I'm doomed. So like, what's what's this trigger here? Dude, why are you waddling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why are you waddling everywhere? Literally. What do you mean? I always walk like this. And I had a, I had uh, two apples with me. Right, so Will like you stuff I, that up your ass too. No, no, no. You can, you can bring. <laughs> that me. was just for fun, Luis. <laughs> I made, I made a little like, uh, uh, oh no, a tool to smoke the the dabs out with yeah. the apple. Okay. Right, so I got dabbed out in the nest. I'm offering people dabs. I'm like, oh my god, is that an apple? <laughs> yeah, I'm like vegan. You know, I'm natural. <laughs> you know, I'm just lying to people. You know, I told people I was Dominican Republican. This is before I had my short hair. Bro, so he's like, Dominican Republican. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Not to be confused with Dominican Democrat. <laughs> no, no, he was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dominican conservative. You know, but... <laughs> no, bro, I'm Dominican Christian. <laughs> I'm Dominican li- libertarian. Oh my god. But no, for real though, I would you know tell people that, and uh, so I'm like in the nest area, public space, twenty thousand people there. And there's a plate there, right? And they have the um, uh, trippy pie pizza or some kind of like. Oh, I've seen those guys. They, they're, they're like they're a famous. mushroom based pizza. Yeah, yeah. And they have mushrooms all over their logos. Yeah. Yep. They're super uh, famous around the music festival seasons. They're yeah. hippy dippy. And like, they're super expensive pizza, like eight yeah, to nine I, bucks. I think I've seen them in Colorado or the Dells. Yep, yep. One of the two. And I saw a plate with one pizza just by a tree. I'm like. It's my time to shine. Oh, all right, all right, all right. It's my time to I shine. I sympathize. I sympathize. And I all started, right. you know, I'm higher than a kite. Yeah. Dude, I'm when you're high, crawling. bro, when you're high, you might as well be a grizzly bear. You will fucking oh, yeah. walk five miles to the gas station <laughs> to, go, to go get yourself some, like, snacky snacks. Oh, yeah. And like, I, I didn't even know if anybody, like, if the person who left the pizza was still there. Yeah. Or if it was, like, some kind of, like, <laughs> weird you know what this is exactly what happened. Well, he was right there, ten feet away, watching probably. me the whole time. I guess he needs it more than I do. Is that guy eating my pizza? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. And then he just saw his gorilla ass. He's like, you know what? This isn't worth uh, saying anything about. That's a Dominican Republican guy. I'll leave him alone. Yeah, yeah that's that's the guy that was saying he was from Panama. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh dude, that's, a, that's a dog ass move so yeah I, I definitely i love you know and food's food you know people live in food deserts yeah. they don't have ah, the opportunity damn. to that's do fair. the things that i've done <laughs> you also meet some interesting ass people at music festivals mm-hmm. like everyone's a good friend everyone's a brother and sister and i love when the artists are like thank everybody around you just give everybody a hug fuck covid we are on this together <laughs> you know, because I went to uh, Lala, like, how was it last year or the year before? 2020, uh, 21 or whatever. I think it might have been last year uh, or maybe. The uh, point is, it was like directly after like uh, COVID and everything. And mm-hmm. everybody was just like so happy to be there and uh, just like giving each other hugs and shit. And people are just overly friendly because you're drunk and on drugs. And me and uh, Adriana are sitting at uh, a table, just like one of the picnic tables they have set up. And they, mm-hmm. they're pretty small. They, they usually only sit like four to five people. So we're sitting there eating. And then this other couple walks up and they're like, oh, can we sit here? We're like, yeah, fuck it. We're just talking to them. And the dude is like drunk and probably on like Coke or some sort of like accelerator. And he's just wolfing down his food. Like it is piping hot. You can see the steam coming from it. It's 98 degrees outside. I'm like there's no way this dude's okay. And he's like... Yeah, man. So, dude, if we like, we should, dude, I go to Wisconsin all the time, dude. We should like get together, you know? And he's just wolfing this shit down. <laughs> and he's like, what are you having? What are, are those the buffalo tenders? And I'm like, yeah, dude, these are like the pineapple tenders. And he's, do you mind if I try? You want a slice of this pizza? I'm like, whatever you've touched, I don't want any part of it. Like, <laughs> I am fucking good right now. I am good. Like, but you just reminded me when you said, like, when you're high, like, you're willing to walk through a fucking forest for anything. And this dude was like, oh, yeah. Just ruined my meal. Like, that guy was zooted. <laughs> yeah, bro. He was, yeah. He was he was trying to meet Travis Scott, but at the Fortnite concert, you know? Mm-hmm. Luis, you're so fucking lame, dude. 
we're over here talking about how we're eating out of trash cans, <laughs> and you're over here like, you know what? There was this guy who was kind of high and annoying, and it just <laughs> turned me off from his food. <laughs> it turned me completely. I was like, Ooh, I don't want it's any just, of that. This is inconvenient to my time, honestly. <laughs> yeah, just what the fuck? No. <laughs> he was the fill in my story. He was telling me he was Dominican conservative. Yeah. You know? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, I'm into a super friendly guy, and he let me have his gender. And I, and the, I was walking away like, fuck, dude, now I gotta go get more. Like, I gotta <laughs> no, I gotta get rid of these. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably one is like, Adriano, you want these? <laughs> you fucking want them? These are fucking trash. At this, one. I'm just gonna leave them in the porta potty. See if anybody <laughs> wants them in there. Them there. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, no, that that yeah, that that's happened I, to me. There, the I mean, food at a music festival is surprisingly good. Oh yeah, surprisingly good. Well, yeah, it's a bunch of hipsters going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that's well, a good. Well, I mean, it's it's a bunch of hipsters, but the competition is like cutthroat too. Because like you can be because there's like six stands and six stands only. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And if and if you make a good impression, you come back and you become that like oh, okay. you know every you frequent year that place. Yeah, every year people are like, oh, I can't wait for hippie trippy pizza and like or like uh. Do, uh over in summer camp at the uh, in Illinois, Chili Coth, they have this famous mac and cheese place, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of mac and cheese named after celebrities. So they have the Biggie mac and cheese, and they have like, you know, they have uh, the Ultimate Warrior uh, bacon blitz or some bullshit like that, right? So like famous people themed mac and cheese, and like they're very uh, they're a staple within the the you know the scene, uh, the music festival mm-hmm. scene, the vendor wise and shit like that. And plus, uh, if you volunteer, people like, because you can get your tickets at these music festivals by volunteering to help out and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And those people will also volunteer in the vendors too. So like, it's, I don't know, sounds like a pretty good gig. I would, I would always wanted to do it. I would always want to volunteer. But the hours are pretty grueling, man. Like I looked into it one year, mm-hmm. and I think you're there like early as fuck. Just help set up. You're there all day, and you probably only get like thirty minutes to fuck off for a while. Oh yeah, but they there's they're on drugs, most of these helpers. I would only do it if they let me test the drugs. <laughs> like personally. They they have like, they have the bunk police in most of these places. What the fuck is the bunk I, police? It's uh so there's these two big brands in the uh uh fentanyl testing, drug testing community called Dance Safe and the Bunk Police. Dance Safe has been along longer since the nineties. There have been, you know, more you know, longer, right? Uh, but the bunk police are newer. They have tents, right? They have their logos up there. If you go to these tents, you know, because at, the, at these music festivals, there's campgrounds you can walk around and shit like that. And some of these people station their own tents with like the logos and stuff. You go in there, you give them your drugs, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we can test it right here," and they test it, or they'll sell you the the, the strips to test it out. All right. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. they're like super advanced now. Like you give them your like a, a bit of your drugs, and then yep. you just give them your phone number, and uh, you wait like thirty minutes. If you don't get a text by then, like you're good, you're safe. But if you get yeah. a text saying "Do not take whatever you gave me," please come back immediately to toss all that shit away. Yep. That's it. I mean, they know they're not going to stop people from doing it, so they might as well make sure people aren't dying there. Uh-huh. But then it's like. I know. I think. I think we actually talked about this when we first started the podcast. Like people were just taking the drugs and doing them themselves, who were like volunteering. And so it's like, well, you're not getting the people there to take the drugs and die, but the volunteers are. And I think yeah. one volunteer had passed away. Hey, rest in peace. He, he a volunteer like OD'd on some shit. Some some on drugs back. that they yeah that they brought back, and they're like, oh, this shit has most likely fentanyl. And he's like, I'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. I'll see about that, bro. Yeah, no, this is a true story. I'll That's have to shame. pull it up before. Yeah, before the the. Yeah, you know, fuck it. Just take my word for it. Who the yeah, fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> Just take my word for it. Take my word for it. If you don't believe me, who the fuck cares? <laughs> oh, before we move off the uh, the fest the festival uh, talk and whatnot, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys if this makes me a, a bad guy, a scumbag. Yes. So the uh, you're a bad guy them, already. Yes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But I've been to a handful of music festivals, right? And the second latest one was a summer camp. I've been to summer camp, I think, three times now. Maybe three times. And uh, the second time, I was there for the full three days. And uh, it was super dark at night. I was walking back. And, like, I tripped and slipped, right? I was, you know, pretty dumb and on drugs. So I fell down. I was outside, like, some, like, people's tent. And I found a bag of grapes. And I'm like... (laughs) 
score. <laughs> 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 so I walk back to the campsite with a bag of grapes. It's bro, like you're, you woo! are a bear, bro. You're <laughs> like a gotcha. real life person had a baby with a bear, and that's you. Yeah, like, imagine being like the people that bought the grapes going outside. Like, yeah. What the fuck's in the grapes? Tripped your way <laughs> into berries. Oh, did I shit myself? Oh no, grapes. <laughs> this is even better. <laughs> Dude, you, you know how that Pablo Escobar, they're they're making a movie. Well, they did. Cocaine the bear or whatever. So, cocaine yeah. bear, yeah, yeah. A bear was found dead in the woods after consuming apparently like 40 kilograms of cocaine. Mm-hmm. Good for him. Good for the bear. I feel like God had that intention for Phil, but Phil just keeps finding food. <laughs> 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 so what dude, happened someday, to this young man? <laughs> someday he'll get there. Oh, dude, he, he ate two full pizzas he found in the trash. <laughs> 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 Two full ones. Yeah, just uh, how the fuck did he get them? <laughs> yeah, man. He could smell Please. the topping. <laughs> yeah, speaking of bears, I found this out recently. How could he fuck, afford I that? We were talking about it. But uh, they were talking about how they have a real problem with bears getting into trash and like destroying shit and like, you know, telling people not to bring certain things to like wild parks. Mm-hmm. And people were talking about how do you make a bear proof trash can? And what every park ranger brought up was like, well, the trash can can be bear proof, but you might inevitably make it stupid proof too. <laughs> so you can't make it like both. Like a bear could get into this, but a human will not figure this out. <laughs> They're going to be like, what, what happened to the trash can? Where's the opening? See, I always just thought that you just chain it to a tree or something. Put Fu- a- funny enough, that's also aimed at people like Phil. Put a, put a padlock on it. <laughs> a padlock on it? I figure that's how you keep your trash safe. For your yeah, food. but then other people can't. Like, yeah. How are you gonna? No, this is for state parks, bro. Where like yeah, state you parks. have to allow it like accessible for Yogi enough Bear. for people to <laughs> throw stuff away. <laughs> okay, boo boo. Let's go find a picnic basket. Boo-boo. Oh, wait, you, I never even considered that. So you told me that there's like wildlife just like circling the dumpsters, just like. Hot picking well, yeah, it, like, probably like yeah. a buffet. Yeah, you've never been to Devil's Lake. It still kind of feels wild up there. Yeah, kind of. Like you think those little trash pandas aren't coming out and mm-hmm. trying to dig their way into the wherever the trash is out there. Before I take this in a morbid uh, place, don't you know Devil's Lake is one of the most deaf tourists in Wisconsin? Like a bunch of like. Oh yeah, I bet a bunch of people die there. Foreign people go there, like you know, jump off Devil's Lake. Oh really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. But ever since Oregon passed a new law, you can be uh, self-euthanized or whatever, or clinically euthanized in Oregon. So now it's become a touristy place. It's pronounced Oregon? Oregon. Yeah, it's Oregon. You God. fucking idiot dipshit. <laughs> Dude, where's Nate Dog to slap you? For real, though. Yeah, maybe you should take a trip. He's going to get the chancla like. out. Yeah, you can. That joke was too far. That <laughs> I took it too Wait, far. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's just saying you should take a trip to Devil's Lake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I god. I took it too far, dude. Cut that out. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We're keeping that. That was Resista. <laughs> but uh Oregon's become a hotspot for like uh suicide tourism. Yeah. And really? uh, if you're ter- term terminally ill, then um uh, yeah, you go to the CS's doctor, he gives you a concoction of pills and shit, and then bam. Oh <laughs> dude. Have you guys seen The Last of Us? <laughs> oh, no, I have not. <laughs> Fucking hey, man, dude. Are you up to date now? That, yeah, I'm fully up to date. Oh, whoever damn. told me that show was great, mm-hmm. undersold it. Leo told us last week how good it was. It is fucking fantastic, dude. Ron Swanson killed it, right? Dude, just every episode is fantastic, mm-hmm. and I've heard that it really does well of like taking the video game and like just simply adding to it, but still like staying very. Um, True to his origin uh, roots, genuine to yep. yeah to mm-hmm. to the story and everything. So, I nice. mean, um, I can't recommend it enough. You know what's funny about the Last of Us? Since it you mentioned it, the age gap between Joel and the uh, the girl, what's her name, Haley or Ellie? Ellie, there we go. Hey, Ellie. Ellie is the same that Leonardo DiCaprio and the nineteen year old model that he's rumored to be seeing with. She's like a French model, Eden Pierre. So like you know if you if you look at that and if you she's nineteen that girl, she's nineteen the Ellie girl's nineteen yep yep she's nineteen in the video game no she's nineteen like the actress okay ah and she Pedro, looked like she was like twelve and Pedro yeah, she ba- looks 
Very, very, very yeah. young. Pedro I Pascal. I thought for sure she was like a child actress. Yeah, so did I. No, no, no. Well, maybe. I don't know. You don't refer to him as Pedro Pascal. That That's is Mr. Daddy, Pascal. Daddy Pascal. Daddy Pascal. Yeah. How either either the age is the same uh, as Leo's and that one chick, the 19-year-old model, or the same age gap as in that. But That's fucking fascinating, Phil. Thank you. Well, I mean... It, Thank you for filling us in. I, I, I would ask your opinion on it, but you support Drake, so you're already cool with that. <laughs> you're down with it. You're like, yeah, dude, the younger... Dude, the I, watch, I watch Wednesday for the plot. <laughs> I haven't watched it. <laughs> So it was, as I was in Madison today, boys, I stopped by a micro distillery called Yahara Bay. Micro distillery? That's, yes, it's because it produces a certain amount of barrels. I think it's average size. I agree with that. I think hey, it's a, a perfectly reasonable size. I, I, I've said that before, so go on. For some would say, I think it's the perfect size. I'm just my own personal opinion but you don't know, talk about the gen i'm sorry yeah statistically <laughs> speaking it's average yeah statistically yeah. speaking it's a very average distillery not micro like i had mentioned earlier you know surprisingly in parts of the world i'm pretty big <laughs> i think in every part of the world bro, you're pretty big <laughs> but well, that's comedy folks uh going on about the gin uh this is a pretty cool uh gin today uh it's going to be very juniper forward, but it's also been aged in a barrel, so it allows you to me- mellow out. Okay. And like it imparts like a like a hint of sweetness and like vanilla to it. Um just like like the way that barrels do to whiskeys, it can also do that to a gin like this. So, um it's a gin that's really good to sip on neat. And this is distilled in Wisconsin, you said? Yep, this is distilled in Wisconsin. Wisconsin gin. Let's dig in. But yeah, we've been tasting it all night. As as I taste it, to me it tastes like like almost like lemon cello, but like in a soft way. Like a lemon vanilla sort of flavor. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it it has like a, a creaminess to it in a really good way. I like it. I, I I'm glad you said the, the, the vanilla notes because this does taste like a vanilla bean. Yeah. Like the like it does m- taste more of the uh the nut, the vanilla nut. The vanilla nut. Yeah. Vanilla's a flower, you mo. Is it? Is, yeah, that, a, is that a seed? <laughs> uh, only the best here, guys. Only the best. Mm-hmm. But yeah, only have you ever been there? Reputable. Bud? Have you ever been no, there? No, I in fact I know you know you um you know what I mean? Like uh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I don't know what you're saying. What uh, the you fuck did you just <laughs> You feel me? What man? the fuck just came out of your mouth? You feel me, dog? <laughs> you, uh, do you get what I am saying? <laughs> no, I do not understand what you're saying. You mentioned you were in Madison today and I was like, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me? I could have like taken half a day or something. Like I oh, it wasn't a plan. Up. It wasn't a plan. Piece of fucking dog shit. Can you um, do that? No, have... Like just like out of the blue, just take a half day and leave like, out of in the, the middle of the day? No, well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, you could have told me ahead of time. Like, yeah, hey, but man, I, I didn't know that I was doing that until today. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, I just took it as a personal, you know. I knew you would. I don't know, man. We just, we haven't seen each other in a while. And <laughs> I thought it would have been nice. Mm-hmm. Baby, baby, it's not I would have told not you. you. It's not you, baby. Baby. Why don't you tag me on Valentine's Day post? How about that? <laughs> I will. Yeah. Who are you hiding us from? No, I will. I will. What am I, pr- pull up your phone. What am I saved under? <laughs> You're saved under daddy, of course. There we go. Definitely. You say it says daddy hashtag power bottom hashtag <laughs> poor, poor us. <laughs> there we go. I've not been there and I actually want to go and check it out. Know that you bring it up. Yeah, um, sh- yeah, you should go. We should go. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a solid little down. place. Maybe yeah. maybe a bro on the go. Or bro on the go. We B-Y-B should do. Presents. We should do. Uh, you know what? You What's should up? take your last co-host mm-hmm. um, that you Caesar? took on the bro on the go. No, I think. Emily and you. Oh, the the, the ta- Emily, Emily and you killed it, dude. The but ta- I was, I was the taco say, aficionado. Yes, the taco aficionado. Caesar one. did well too. Caesar yes. did well. Agreed. He did. A, he did a lot of the camera shooting. I noticed. Uh-huh. And uh, shout out Caesar. I was just pointing out that she she was good on camera. That's that's yes. yeah. She was just for somebody who I don't think does that. Does bro, she? Like, you talking about me, bro? You guys had good chemistry on bro, camera. That's, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Me, bro. All right, um, but point is, you should take her oh, yeah. and do a distillery thing. Distillery thing? Yeah, like Milwaukee has plenty, like 
five distilleries that but I can even think just of. like breweries, man. Or There's breweries, so many breweries yeah, everywhere. She, I mean, it's as great of a hang as she is. I don't think she has any uh, experience in breweries. We will sacrifice ourselves and go. Yeah, we. Please. I will. I will put myself on the line in my very poorly developed liver and kidneys and track it myself. Yes. See, Emily's more of like you know the the type to go to like underground like you know capybara fights, capybaras. Capoeira. You know I mean? Capo- no, no, no. The the the, the little the little the, 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 the little pigs. The little uh, the little beavers. Capybara. Capybaras. There we go. <laughs> the giant like rodents. rodents. Yeah, the giant rodents. Yeah, bro. God damn, Phil. Tacos how and giant this, rodents. Uh, how much, how much was this bottle of gin? Um, like thirty five dollars. Thirty. It was wow. like thirty it's reasonable. to thirty five. It was super it's reasonable. reasonable. Um, for for the, for the taste, yeah, definitely t- worth it. Tell me, like I I described it, but doesn't mm-hmm. it like. It has like a soft bite, you know, like oh, yeah. a lot of gins can have a harsh bite, which, mm-hmm. you know, I think yeah. is like a characteristic that people see in like oh, yeah. very juniper dry gins. Yep. But this one has a hint of sweetness, so I wouldn't describe it as like extra dry or anything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. I, I definitely one. put this above, uh, you know, the Amsterdam's and the, uh, oh, the yeah. Bombay. It's definitely oh. a beginning to get into the price range of like in the 40s, but it's well enough in the 30s that it's smooth and it's, you know, a little bit upper, you know, fancier than the Amsterdam and yeah. the Malibu. It, it's or uh, no, not the Malibu, the Bombay. My apologies. Mm-hmm. No, I, one I, thing that I I noticed definitely when we did the gin tasting video a couple uh, weeks ago mm-hmm. was the cheapest one tasted so aggressively like lemon, but it was also mixed with rubbing alcohol. That you're describing vanilla and all these other notes that like I feel. I would very much enjoy it. And I think the people who are listening and watching would also maybe seek it out. Now, I don't see you guys mixing it with anything, including even ice. I don't see anything in the glass. Nope. So would neat. you guys recommend enjoying this on the rocks with a splash of tonic, splash of lemonade? How would you have the best cocktail made with that gin? I would say that like this and a gin martini would be great mm-hmm. where it's like mostly gin and you dress stirred, it not shaken yeah, stirred <laughs> and uh exactly and you, you might want to touch it with a little bit of vermouth um a, maybe a little orange bitters uh so that orange vanilla kind of play together and just stir that you know um i think it drinks really well by itself as well neat that's how we wanted to try it to give it a, like an accurate spirit review now so hypothetically mm-hmm. speaking you're the type of person that like picks up berries from the ground Right, and takes them home. Yes, yes. How would you spice this up? With some Sprite or with some like ginger ale? Like, like an easy way to spice it up at home? Um, I would say ice. I would add ice, ice and then I would take an, a lemon peel and I would um, take that and express it over just the spirit on ice. Mm-hmm. If I were to add anything to it, maybe like some water, like just water. Wow, okay. And like, or club soda or tonic but i feel like if you start veering into tonic you're gonna introduce a good amount of sweetness and maybe lose out on like the nuances that the barrel the brings nice to the table of, yeah, yeah. Exactly. like it's just gonna taste like a gin and tonic or i haven't tried it yet like i would have to test that that uh, theory out or that uh, that idea but that's what it, usually the way that uh, more expensive or more um subtled or nuanced spirits get lost in cocktails so you kind of want to go for something that has a lot of character and Mm -hmm. has something that's pronounced i would give this uh, out of the bro rating five out of five i'm a big i am a big big gin guy yeah you love your gin i love gins i love you're also a big guy in general hey i'm a i'm a big guy full of love got a big heart i got a i got big arms big one out of five my bros. For real, he's been he's been diagnosed. He has an enlarged heart. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I have the life expectancy of a big dog. Yeah, he has a life expectancy my of back, a great day, dude. My back's gonna give out. <laughs> Can you plug it in, please? Speed of great Danes. Like dude, you, you, you've got hip dysplasia, right? I'm gonna go blind by the time I'm thirty. <laughs> People are gonna be like, "Oh, he's he's still alive. It's cute." I'm just in the living room, like. Oh. This blind as hell. Why do they put him down? Me and Juan are forcing you in front of a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he means he, he means it's what he, he brings us together. <laughs> oh. I'm looking he, the wrong way. He's grunting and gargling at the camera, and we're just translating that as he he he's crying right now of <laughs> happiness. He he yeah. he's he's overjoyed. 
You guys gotta sh- shake me up just to make sure I'm still alive. <laughs> These are the happiest moments of his life. <sighs> He's typing out, "Please kill me." <laughs> <laughs> you gotta shake me every time I don't choke oh, on my man. tongue. I guess uh, I just had a, a <laughs> like going back to one of the other things that we were talking about earlier in the podcast, Luis. Oh. Um, when you were talking about what, what the fuck? The gin? No, 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 some religious shit you said that like. Like how I wish I could get swayed into religion. Yeah, you wish you could get swayed into religion. When the hell did you say this? Are you guys having conversation without me now? Uh, I think we said it before we started. I think we said it before we started the podcast. Oh my god! When I was pooping, you guys talking about me when I poop? Yeah, when you were pooping and and not wiping. Don't say that on air. Oh my god! You filthy animal! No wonder it's stank in here. (laughs) No wonder it came in stanky. Yeah, a little stanky. Beyond that, what like? Luis, when when you go to church events and and you hear comments like from like the churchy figures uh, saying things, because I assume you are you have you ever been a godfather or yeah, been a godparent? I was uh, I yeah, right? a godparent to two uh, two beautiful boys. Shout out! Uh, I don't know if their mom wants to. I actually interviewed his her their their mom uh, Rachel during the did you have the mother's did day. you have to do a religious class to be a godparent for them? I did not, but they already go to a Catholic school. Yeah, no, just because so, like, like when you have to do it, and it's like a Spanish, I guess like the Spanish side of the church, mm-hmm. um, they make you take like a whole like hour to the two and a half hour uh, of class like what it means, of what, what it means, to yeah. Out. And mm. some of the uh, some of the comments and in, in like are very traditional, like to the church. They're not really that surprising, yeah. but like. You can tell it made like half the room uncomfortable because a lot of people were like under thirty, and uh, and there was like these teachers who are like nearing sixty. You know what I mean? There was just a big generational gap there, and they were just talking about how, yeah, if you get an abortion, you're you're a, a killer. Um, there's just like a lot of stuff like this. Um, if you listen to Daddy Yankee, you're a harlot. Yeah, kind of a thing. Yeah, like, yeah if you you shouldn't have. You should have heard what they said about about Bad Bunny, but I guess just how do you how do you personally like balance that? Like when you go and you, like this is like a part of like the culture you're also a part of the culture. I mean, it is because like if you've baptized somebody in the church, then mm-hmm. you've like become a part of the culture. Just you are like yeah, you you are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I want to I want to kind of rewind a little bit are you asking how i personally react when i'm in those situations that are, i guess like how you, you know, personally possibly, react or how like you think about like uh, how you think about it more like your views on it you you just let it roll off your back and like do you think you're think taking this it. a little too lightly is this what i think what juan's trying to say no like no i think i understand what juan is saying because yeah. juan and i have very similar opinions to um our savior uh, jesus christ but to jesus baby Jesus. Jesus I want I want to give a very honest answer and it, that's and that's why I know, asked you because I knew it would be honest and interesting <laughs> also comprehensive I think a lot of those people are very they, they grew up very hopeful mm-hmm. and people who are very into religion are either very very poor and come from poor backgrounds or they're very, very rich and have to justify their means. Like, I made this money. I, I go to church. So when I see people who are, like, saying horrible things, like, mm-hmm. over the holidays, I was watching TV with some family members, and then two guys were kissing, and somebody in the room had said, that's why this country is going the way it is. Yeah. That, like, just, just like it was nothing. Like Over like, that? Yeah, just like that's why, that's why this country is going the way it is, because two guys are kissing on TV. And in the moment, I would just be like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like, I couldn't agree more. And I lead into it even more. And I'll be like, <laughs> abortions, gay marriage, illegal immigrants. Like, <laughs> what we're, the it's fuck? Just, Bad it's bunny. getting out of control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be like, men are dressing like women. There's no such thing as real men. It's but a pinch of Harry Styles. In my mind, I'm like, well, that person's like, they're sick. They're, they're sick in the head. Like, yeah. when the Pope, who's currently in, I guess, in office – or in church right now, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. The Pope who's Pope right now comes out and he's like, being gay is not a crime. God created gays. Everything's normal. And people around him, like the bishops and the cardinals, want to get him out of there. Like, at a certain point, the religion has to adapt. 
and come like get with the times otherwise it's gonna fall behind and so long yeah. long long story short we should also put like a big like disclaimer saying like religious talk you may get offended Fair. if you are muslim go away if you are muslim <laughs> catholic or so, ignorant so i.e like, the two we just spoke about <laughs> <laughs> to to summarize, it would you say it's like best to just like compartmentalize like whatever thoughts you have about those people who are there like representing the church, and probably yeah, just like go on with your day and like take the certificate, be in the kid's life, you know, like yeah, fulfill you, that part of it, right? Yeah, you can't get angry at the establishment. Yeah, for well, you can definitely can. You you can't get angry. What I meant to say is you can't get angry at the person who's representing the establishment. Right, because yeah. they're just repeating whatever bullshit got repeated to them. Yeah, they're a figurehead. Got... Yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, if someone controls how you feel, if someone says something to you and it's still weighing on you, that person who's making you angry isn't your enemy. They're your master because they're controlling how you feel for the rest of the day. So if you're just like, you know what? No sweat off my back. I'm going to live my life. That person's going to live their life. I'm going to try to do better for what I do and try to, like you said, be in that person's life or yep. like when you get, you got married by the church, like that's something that, you know, you personally decided to do. So we're still taking part in that establishment and that culture and that those rules that are in place. So just take what you can out of it and what you don't agree with don't necessarily apply. Yep. That's so beautiful. You joined you the can matrix. Have an, yeah. Exactly. You can have an iPhone and not use every feature. That was you can beautiful. Believe in God and not believe in every little thing. Yep, yep. You can believe in. Uh, I, like, I love that. That's a good note. Now going back to Phil's Muslim hate. Go on, <laughs> go on. Yeah, you were telling us how much you were you telling us about like all the stuff. No, no, you, no that's perfect. I like, you heard I like, on Alex Jones. And I, all this I like. Stuff. I like what Luis is saying. That yeah. uh, it's time to. Um, you no, know. but you were saying about like how prehistoric the Muslims are and whatnot. How they don't change anything. How they don't change anything. They Whoa. don't look the same. They, well, That's what you said. I'm you pretty said sure that. not eating pork is not that big of a deal, bro. Bro, the sacrifices uh, I, don't do I it made. It gives me a tummy ache. <laughs> I made a lot of sacrifices when I was, you know. So you took your personal trauma. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you vomited out on this microphone. One, what, like two billion people <laughs> that are now Muslim? This is a pre prehistoric <laughs> religion. These people, <laughs> they're out of control. I mean, but old jokes aside, I, Muslim people are like one of the most nicest religion and all this stuff. But then they got the traditional conservative like extremists are like, we'll that throw you, everything. we'll throw you off a building. Yeah, bro. That applies to everything. Have you have oh, you yeah, seen yeah, yeah. Orthodox like Russian Orthodox Christians? Well, I mean, they're super hardcore. I mean, Orthodox Christian, yeah, Orthodox Christians is like have the hills of eyes vibe going. Yeah, on. they do. That's what I'm saying. They're hardcore as fuck. Yeah, man. So like, you're gonna have super hardcore versions or like, uh, cultish. There's all sorts of like Christian cults in America that like we've yep. been exposed to. And most of them have been infiltrated by the FBI and CIA. Rightfully so. That's what my fucking yep. tax dollars better be doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going fucking trying to find yeah. documents at an ex-president's house. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. Nope. Like, yeah, go, go fucking track the child molesters and yeah. all the... Yeah. I, I want the next Martin Luther King tracked, the next Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, gone. 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 Never want to hear about him. Yep. Gone. And how fitting. This is our first episode for Black History Month, by the way. So very fitting. It's very not. fitting. Very fitting. There was one that released on Sunday. No. Oh. Well, well listen, this is our second episode for Black History Month. Yes. And it's yeah. even more fitting. S Sunday even the more fifth. fitting. Yeah, yep. This is actually you, you know, know he's this not is good actually at details, our this. Valentine's Day themed episode. And if you're is listening really? to this wow. on Valentine's Day, I feel bad for you. Yeah, we didn't even make it Valentine's Day related. Nope. But you, if you check out our Instagram, we're going to have a Valentine's Day themed uh, bro taste to this little logo. How about this? To close out the episode, let's all suggest either a, a dish or a drink to drink on Valentine's Day. Oh, Ooh. that's easy. You're going to eat your partner's butt. You're going to bend them true. over, put your yeah, cheeks up in front true. of you. and Dude, just take, a, take a saltine cracker, get the residue. 
Oh yeah. Exactly. Just toss that bitch in. Bro, get the Nutella in exactly. there. You won't even know Dude. what's what. Dude. <laughs> Get the Nutella yeah. in there. You won't even. You won't even mind, bro. You're like, you don't even got a shower today, baby. Dude, maybe I'm bringing the Nutella. Bro, I heard one of the. Get some barbecue sauce. <laughs> you lather it on that one. Exactly. Give it a few spanks, bro. Bro, put some ground rub on her. <laughs> bro, bro, Dude, talk I about a yeast nastiest, infection. <laughs> I heard the nastiest joke the other day. What's up? And it's it's just sad with me. It's uh this uh these teenagers are having the sex. And they're doing the 69 in the bedroom. And this guy's just going to town, you know, doing the 69. And for those people who don't know what the 69 is, it's when. As you uh, do. It's Takashi. Yeah, the lady's on her back and you're over her, you know. <laughs> That's how you like to do that, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> and, That's uh, how you, the, you're like, the fuck mom, it, I don't care if she can breathe. <laughs> the mom starts knocking on the door and she's like, what the fuck's going on in here? And the son, you know, of the of the mom goes to the door and he's like, oh, what, what, what do you mean? She's like, what the fuck's going on in here? What's all that noise? He's like, oh, nothing. And she goes, why do you have blood going down your lip? And he's like, oh, I fell. And she, the mom says, oh, it must have been in the toilet because you have a bunch of shit on the top of your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so gross. So for those uh, planning uh, to try and spice things up this Valentine's Day, go uh, go try the sixty nine. Go but shower first. Buy yeah. some adult wipes. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> buy some wipes ass it. wipes. <laughs> 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 buy some dude wipes. No man, the dish that I recommend is uh, bruschetta. Bruschetta. That's great. It's yeah, simple dude, it's and sexy. Dish. Fuck yeah! It's so easy to make. So fucking easy. And it's remarkably in season right now. Right, so Everyone knows tomatoes and basil are super in season. I was right gonna now. ask, what the hell is br- bruschetta? Tomato, basil. <laughs> As I'm stuck in the fucking Arctic, and I'm getting ready yeah. for a winter storm, and I'm yeah. like, you know what's up? Sure you, you bring in your heirlooms, <laughs> your summer tomatoes and your summer basil. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. make that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about okay. you, bud? Um, no, I think the the best thing, well, because... Dish or drink for Valentine's for Day. For Valentine's Day, you got to think sweets. You got to lather them with something, you know, sugary. They love ladies. And, you know, I, I guess I don't want to, like, put a generalized statement out there. Your romantic partners, your significant others, they want to be sweet. They want to be um, treated out. So I recommend going to ice cream parlor shops. Okay. How many of those are there? I'm like, well, I mean, that's a good question. How many of those are there that are open right now? <laughs> <laughs> that as we're, well. We're so, expecting eight inches of snow. <laughs> oh, eight inches. <laughs> in 24 hours. <laughs> you know what's perfect you know? for February? More ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not even perfect let's go on buy Valentine's some. Day. Not even let's go buy some. Let's go find an ice cream parlor <laughs> to fucking buy some. <laughs> Bro, you couldn't say that shit for July or June? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I went to this ice cream parlor in Milwaukee called At Random. It's yeah. a co- it's a That's cocktail. a bar. Yeah, it's a cocktail bar. bar. Yeah. They have a specific... Uh, bro, it's so nice. I got to go there. I, I got to go there. Oh, man. You got to make reservations and all this dumb oh, shit. okay. But and I still want to go there. It's very nice. There's a dress code and all this stuff. But they have... Yeah, like, to keep roof I feel like you out. It bro, didn't work. They have uh, a whole section on ice cream drinks. Yeah. Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Milwaukee is like super well known for their ice cream drinks. Yep. yep. So like, th- I mean, that's what's gonna get your significant others s- swooning over. See, you. then why did you say that shit? You're over here like find an ice cream parlor. Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> just just take the fun parts of that bar. So which go to was at random parlor. in Milwaukee, an yeah, awesome cocktail bar. Um, that's that's how you pull value out of that, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. Go, no. go Juan, there. Juan, bring us home. Where? What are you making? Or, or and something? then, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to um, pop the pants off of your significant other, um, I recommend you make them a beautiful cocktail um, called the Clover Club, uh, named after a Brooklyn bar, self-named, called the Clover Club. Clover so Club? listen to this. Mm-hmm. It's got gin, lemon juice, and egg white, some raspberry syrup, um, and then you're also going to toss in a few raspberries into the, the bottom of your tin, crush those, and last but not least, a little dry vermouth. So it introduces some elegance in there, makes it more of an adult drink mm-hmm. rather than just like a raspberry gin drink, right? Um, you take all of these things together, shake them up, strain them into a martini glass, 
And I'm telling you, it's literally one of the sexiest looking like sour type beverages with an egg white because it just goes from this like really beautiful light red pink to like a pink foam on top. And then you garnish that with this raspberry. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't love raspberry? Who doesn't love lemon? Yeah. Come on. Also super in season right now. Exactly. Exactly. But like aren't eggs super expensive? That cocktail is just like a $30 cocktail. We're not even using all of it. We're using the egg white only. Yeah, you're using the egg white. Yeah, you're just using the egg white. That's That's a waste of money. Okay. So like 30 cents. 30 cents of one egg is probably three dollars now no it's not bro these are some tough they're times. like six dollars a dozen That's you're like eight dollars a dozen when's the last time yes. you went grocery shopping? what's a banana like ten dollars it's like uh 220 probably for a pound right now are you moron that was a reference <laughs> that was a lucio bluth <laughs> there's reference. always <laughs> money in the banana stand <laughs> there's a, there you go thank you Lise. but yeah Make make your fans a Clover Club. Make your boo a Clover Club. She's going to fucking love you. Look it up. It's a great drink. It is a great drink. The Clover Club. The Clover Club. I like that. The Clover Club. Clover Club. All on three. One, two, two three. three. The Clover Club. <laughs> oh, what? Right That's what we're going to do. All right, one more time. Okay. One, two, one, two, three. The Clover, Clover Club. Club. There we go. There Beautiful. Go. In unison. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned. For more content on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, uh, that other one that everybody still has. All of the all of the places. Only exactly. fans. And we'll see you 